Hello, I'm Dr. Benita Rattan. I'm a doctor, but I'm also a cosmetic formulator specifically for skin of color. So this whole channel is dedicated to skin of color. The reason being that our melanocytes are larger. Those are cells that produce the pigment melanin and they are easily triggered. I always say one scratch, one bite or one burn and we hyperpigment. This is why we have to use different products and we have different skincare rules um, compared to Caucasian skin. Today's video is all about how to apply sunscreen and the classic mistakes that get made. Right now I'm on holiday, which is why I am not filming from my bedroom, I'm filming from the balcony. Let me show you where I'm filming from. So this is where I'm filming from right now. It is beautiful, but it's a little bit loud, so hopefully you can hear me. <laughs> I also don't have a tripod, which is why I'm literally holding my phone on, a, on my computer screen. Right, so the reason I want to make today's video is because right now... Yes, and this is why you need a tripod. <laughs> okay, so the reason I want to make this video is because on holiday right now, I'm seeing a lot of people making mistakes with how they apply their sunscreen. So I thought this is a really important video that I need to make for you. If that sounds good to you, give me a thumbs up. Let's dive right in. Right, so when people see their first wrinkle, that's usually when people start to get into skincare. They start to research, they come onto YouTube and they learn about it. They start to buy expensive anti-aging creams, retinol creams, they buy collagen supplements. But really the most important thing that they need is their broad spectrum SPF 50. Because if you don't wear that religiously, none of these other supplements and creams, none of these expensive creams are going to work, including my creams. Um, and this is why I say your broad spectrum SPF 50 really is your absolute staple skincare product that you need from childhood, from three years old, when you're going to school, all the way through, out your entire life, you need your broad spectrum SPF 50. It's a myth that skin of color doesn't require uh, broad spectrum SPF 50 because we get hyperpigmentation, we get melasma. Melasma are when your melanocytes, those cells become triggered and start to spit out pigmentation in the localized areas. Often it starts as tiny little freckles, people think they're really cute until they start to form a patch, they amalgamate, and then because of cell talk, you're getting pigmentation on the forehead and the upper lip area. And once that's happened, you now have got chronic melasma and it's a lifelong condition that you need to manage. And I just don't want our skin of color family to have to deal with this. I certainly don't want the next generation to have to deal with it. Um, so if we get good at applying our sunscreen, this isn't going to be a problem for our children. First thing you need to know, when you're buying your sunscreen, you need to look for the word broad spectrum. Broad spectrum means UVA and UVB protection. I'll give you an example. So this is in Zincable. This is the Dr. V um, mineral sunscreen for skin of color with no white cast. Now on here it says broad spectrum. You want to look for those words and then SPF 50. The reason is that this SPF 50 only relates to UVB rays. UVB rays, B for burning, um, it only tells you how long you have in the sun before you're likely to burn. UVA rays, which leads to aging, A for aging, you want to make sure it says broad spectrum. That's what that covers, is UVA and UVB. Now there is no good international standard for how you write the level of protection of UVA on sunscreen bottles. In the UK, we will do PA and then how many pluses. That will tell you how much UVA protection you're getting. So with the Zincable, for example, it's PA and then four pluses. That's maximum UVA protection. So ideally you want to be going for three or four pluses for it to be high UVA protection. The next mistake I see being made is when do you apply your sunscreen in your skincare routine? In the morning, after you've washed your face and you've applied your moisturizer, then you apply your sunscreen. Your sunscreen is the last step of your skincare routine. Wait, I'd say about five minutes, just for that film to form and dry on the face before you apply makeup, if you want to apply makeup. Um, but it's in that order. It's wash, moisturize, sunscreen, not sunscreen and then moisturizer. That's a mistake that I see being made. Um, and also wait a few minutes for it to form that film 
because that's how sunscreen works is it's almost like a second skin on your face um, to protect you so it's important for that to form because otherwise if you go in with your foundation you're going to disrupt that film it's not going to form and you're not going to get the protection you think you're getting okay so the next thing I see is the wrong amount of sunscreen being used most often too little so what we tend to say is a quarter to a half a teaspoon and what I say is put it on the back of your hand so I'm going to show you what it looks like to squeeze this out onto the back of the hand um, so that you can see how much you're putting on and then you dot it around the face so this is how much you're looking to put on about a quarter to half a teaspoon and then you want to dot it around the face and then rub it in Okay, so as you can see, I'm putting this on top of my makeup. I've actually got full makeup on, including powder. The only thing I haven't got on today are lashes. It's So what I find is, it does just blend in um, with my makeup, but I wouldn't, on my eyeshadow, it's going to ruin your eyeliner. So I wouldn't do it around here um, for the second and third application. I'd use powder SPF 50. So the mistake I see being used are, is that people will put it onto their hand and then they'll rub their hands together and then they rub it on their face. But guess what you're doing? You're wasting the product. So you're not putting the correct dosage on the face. It's being wasted in your hands. So just don't make that mistake. It's really easy when you just pop it at the back of your hand and you just dab it and dot it around the face. Then you know you're making an even film around across the face. You're not you know, just getting it in one area. It is an even film. And as you can see, there's no white cast and I'm wearing it on top of my makeup. The next mistake I see people doing is not actually having their sunscreen in their bag ready to reapply every two to three hours. And the reason why that's a mistake is that, for example, I'm in Rhodes right now, it's 30 degrees Celsius, I'm sweating all day long, and guess what, that film is coming off. Even when it says water resistant, it's only for 80 minutes. You still have to reapply every two hours. So, you know, like, especially if you're someone like me and you enjoy water skiing and you enjoy swimming and you you know you're running and you're playing with the kids um, you're in at the water you just have to get really good at reapplying every two hours um, and just make it habit the best way honestly is to have one sunscreen next to your toothbrush in the morning so you brush your teeth and you apply your sunscreen first thing in the morning before any sun or UV hits the skin before you get in the car and you stop you know dropping your children to school and then also have a second sunscreen in your handbag that you can reapply throughout the day because UV is coming in through the windows when you're driving, at home when you're sitting at home, it's coming in through the windows, it's coming, it's, it's there constantly. So people forget this because it's invisible. It's not sun rays, visible light I'm so concerned about, it's UV which is invisible and it triggers those melanocytes and it leads to early pigmentation. Skin of color ages very well, it's the pigmentation that gives our age away. And I'm right now 37 years old, at this age I'm, st I'm starting to feel my age, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. <laughs> as soon as I see you know a wrinkle on my face I get you know even more uh, on top of the collagen on top of my protein on top of um, you know reapply my sunscreen etc but I just don't want us to get to have to get to that point where we're you know we're aging prematurely that's absolutely the worst thing I could think of so I really um, just get really good have it's a habit is keeping the sunscreen in your handbag the next mistake I see being made is people using powder SPF 50 as their first primary application. That is not going to be enough. It's okay as a top up on top of makeup if you want to do that. And I would do that, honestly, at a party where I have got really heavy makeup. I've highlighted, I've contoured, and I've got, you know, uh, cream contour and powder contour. Then I would top up with um, probably Color Science. I really like Color Science SPF 50. It's the one that I use. I use uh, medium color, I think. Um, and I would put that on top, but don't use that as your first application. It's not enough. You need a cream-based SPF 50. The other mistake I see being made is um, on the beach, people just leave their sunscreen out in the heat. Your sunscreen breaks down in 
direct sunlight. So cover it with a towel or keep it in your bag. Try and keep it cool. You do not want your sunscreen bottle hot because you're breaking down the filters inside and it's just not going to be effective. So it's another mistake that I see being made and I want you not to make that mistake. <laughs> The other mistake I see being made is people thinking that they have enough SPF in their foundation for it to be enough. Now anyone that wears foundation, uh, especially a cream foundation, knows first of all you're dabbing it across the face, um, you don't wear the, the, the correct amount of, S, of product for it to match the SPF that it says on the bottle because you're using it for, for how it looks, not for the SPF rating. And then on top of that, if you're like me, you're blending with a blending um, sponge, which is wet. And guess what? That is also mopping up a lot of the foundation. And so again, you're not getting reaching the SPF that you require. So relying on you know your SPF 25 in your foundation is never going to be a good idea. But on top of that, I would never even recommend you know such a low SPF sunscreen for skin of color I'm always going to ask you to push for an SPF 50 because that's what we deserve that's what our skin requires and I want the best for your skin okay so if you already have melasma then I highly recommend you get the anti melasma sunglasses which basically protects the zygoma area 80% of melasma starts here as fine as little um, freckles and then starts to spread so this is a physical barrier that will protect you from UV and you don't just wear this on its own this goes on top of your sunscreen the other thing I would uh, highly recommend is your wide brimmed hat do not just rely on your sunscreen unless you are actively doing water sports please keep your wide brimmed hat on at all times because again you can't rely on your sunscreen alone to protect you from UV you're trying to also protect yourself from direct sunlight. Anyone that goes out with melasma without a hat will feel their pigmentation darkening the following day. It's that fast, which I don't also want to happen to you. Right, so I'm in the comment section for one hour at the launch of every single video, as you know. Please can you write down below which other videos you want me to make for you? I feel like I'm really getting through that list quite quickly. Um, and I've decided I'm gonna try really hard. I'm on this holiday at the moment, I'm try gonna try really hard to push myself to make you five videos a week. I used to do five videos a week uh, about six months ago, and then I started on a secret project, which I still can't talk about, but soon you're gonna know what that's all about. Uh, so I had to cut back on YouTube, but now I'm free and I really want to give you as much content, help you as much as possible. So please do write down what you need to make for you. Um, and don't forget to hit your notification bell because I'm in the comment section for one hour at the launch of every video. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Skincare by Dr. V and at the Hyperpigmentation Clinic. And on TikTok, which is Dr. Mito Rata. Take care. Bye.